wanted to ask you, um, I know that there are many women out there killing the man's children inside the womb by way of abortion. Yes. How did these type of women become so evil that they are willing to cut off the children's body part and replace them with fake body part? Because it doesn't change the boy from, it doesn't cause him to become a girl, and it doesn't cause a girl to become a boy when they change the body parts. What happened to women when they become that evil that they can mutilate children like that, that come from their wombs? I think it is one of uh, an ancient, uh, well-known to Christians at least, a uh, very well-known phenomenon. If you look at the struggles that the Israelites had in the desert when they left Egypt, it was always with child sacrifice cults, the followers of Baal and so forth, that in the mountains were sacrificing their children the Canaanites that were literally eating their own children uh, in sacrificial meals and things. So, you know, this is an ancient uh, evil. Um, and I think what it's come down to is that um, women have come to hate men so much, and it really comes from their own self-hatred, their own self-hatred, yeah. um, that they, they want and desire the power to physically change their sons. Uh, into whatever they want. It may not even be into a male. Sometimes they, they're asexual or agender, or these weird, all these genders that they've made up. And it's an, it's an expression of a kind of godlike power that these women desire. And um, this, this surgery seems to give them the kind of high they get pretending they have that power. Amazing. Very good explanation, man. You are... Uh, your other son is with this woman. Uh, are you concerned that she may try to do that to him too? So far, she hasn't uh, done that to him. She's done other things to him. Though. How, how um, old is he? He's the same age. They're twins. Oh, okay. And so she's done other things like what? Well, she, she did this with her daughter. She picks a winner and a loser child. So like with my son, Jude, she never taught him to tie his shoes and she taught James to tie his shoes in secret. And then she would say, Jude, you're just too dumb to tie your shoes. We'll just get you Velcro shoes. Um, she never taught him to use a knife and fork and made him eat with his hands when she taught his brother how to use a knife and fork. Um, he is humiliating him constantly. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time with my son Jude just redressing all those things. Um, so what started happening after we had the children, when, when the boys had turned two, I started noticing that uh, she would say weird things to James when she would put him into timeout. And so I'd go over and listen. One, one time I heard her say, you don't want to be a boy. The monsters only eat boys when she'd put him in a timeout <laughs> and scare him to make him scared to be a boy. And I told her, hey, you can't do that anymore. Stop doing that. Um, a few months later, she filed for divorce. And because she's a pediatrician, she was able to find psychologists, which forced me out of the house. And I moved a mile away from the house to stay near my boys. And um, then my son started wearing a rag on his head. And I said, why are you wearing that rag on your head all the time? And he said, uh, well, because mommy says I'm a girl. Wow. So and, I and how, old my, is, how old was he at the time when that happened? Just turned three. Amazing. Yeah. And then I whipped out my iPhone. I took the first iPhone video I'd ever taken. Um, and uh, it's on YouTube. If you just search for Mommy Says I'm a Girl, it's everywhere. It went viral. Um, and he just says, yeah, Mommy Says I'm a Girl. Mommy cross-dresses me in dresses. She paints my nails. And she's, I found out she was presenting him to the world as a girl. She was teaching him that he had a girl's brain and a boy's body and had exposed him to transgender books, which I consider pornographic and uh, had really put him far along this, this route. Um, and then she sent me an email saying, I just want you to be prepared for what's coming your way, Jeff. Um, you know, you have a transgender son. And she sent me another email in which she contemplates cutting his penis off, assuring me that he's still going to be my child even after he loses his penis. My 
They had planned on chemically castrating him at eight and putting him on cross-sex hormones at 10, which would have permanently sterilized him. And they were looking at removing his testicles and penis at 14. That's most of that's in the medical records or, and all of it is in testimony. Sworn amazing. testimony. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Do you so she's recently the, the court order, the courts are doing terror. The courts are, are not fighting this. The courts are not stopping this. So the family court gave me 50, 50, parental rights but it only it didn't give me 50 50 possession i had to go through a counseling regime you know stuff like unconditionally loving your child recognizing the signs of bullying the usual things you'd expect from like a parenting class so they said when you go through that then you're going to get 50 50 custody and no child support because everybody knew that my child support was really funding lawsuits against me and my boy yeah so um what happened was the counselors then created a four thousand dollar a month counseling regime blew this thing up it's been a year and a half. They started teaching my son that he was a girl. They affirmed him as a girl without my consent. They, they did this secretly in secret counseling where I'm not allowed to even know what they told them. And I revoked consent for the court-appointed counselors to see my son on the basis that they're abusing him. So then she went back to court and filed another, uh, another motion to remove all my parental rights um, but also, it's illegal for me to be speaking to you and your audience right now. The yeah, I was going to ask court, you yeah, about that. Around. I was going to ask you, because you mentioned that because you are in court right now, you're not, you're not supposed to publicly speak about these things, right? Well, actually, the court imposed a, a permanent injunction on me uh, to never be able to, again, speak about any transgender issue, any LGBT issue, whether my son's a boy or a girl. I'm not allowed to do any blog posting, talk to any reporter, any of this. This is all totally unconstitutional. Um, and I have decided that I'm not following unconstitutional orders, mandates, and laws anymore. Amazing. Um, the other day, you, you talked about the Republicans, how the representatives of the Republican Party, they are in favor of this transgender, and in, they are helping to finance it. Am I, did I read that wrong? No, you're absolutely right. One of the shocking things that I've discovered is that the entire transgender movement is being funded and led by Republicans. Um, there's a really good article you can get at the Federalist. It's called Who Are the Rich White Men Funding the Transgender Movement by Jennifer Bilek. And in that, she go, she traces the funding. They wash money through Australian non NGOs and they bring it back into the country. And the two top donors, the two top funders and pushers of, tra of the transgender ideology are, re are the two largest Republican donors, Paul Singer and James Pritzker. We now call himself Jennifer Pritzker. Paul Singer founded the Human Rights Campaign, which is the largest. If you see the equal sign, that's, that's his organization. Um, and they, he gives millions of dollars to governors and senators and representatives, and they stand to lose that money if they go against uh, any kind of LGBT uh, issue. That's why we keep losing these issues in legislators. So in Idaho, the Republicans control all three branches of government and the Senate refused to pass a law. The House passed it, but the Senate refused to pass a law banning sex change surgeries on kids. They're letting kids be physically castrated in Idaho right now because Republicans blocked the law. That was done because of the Paul Singer crowd uh, the the uh, Chamber of Commerce crowd all went together to block that bill. Same thing happened in Alabama. Just happened in Texas. Uh, the Texas Republican establishment blocked blocked bills to outlaw sex change surveys on kids. We're going to have to get serious in the Republican Party and yep. look at our leaders. And these people are are not on our side. They've never been on our side. Yep. They're turncoats. And we need to start recognizing that. We're basically enthralled to a, a, a group of elites that want to take us back to ball worship. Someone else's 